So what we're gonna talk about today is bias cutting. Ah! I'm Sean King, a certified fence professional and certified fence contractor. Since I was eight years old, I have lived, breathed, and sweat fence. We need to stop building fence like granddad and start building fence like our kids will need to in the future. This is Mr. Fence Academy. Everybody freaks out when we talk about bias cutting chain link fence. I know, been there, done that. I still have nightmares over it. But it's really not that complicated. It's a mathematical sequence is all it is. It's either a one, two pattern, a one, three pattern, a one, four pattern, one, five, or a one, one, right? That's it. So once you figure out what the pattern is at the top, just wash and repeat, no matter how tall the fence is, just keep going the same pattern. <sighs> Up my way. Oh, keep coming up. You always want to put these on the opposite side of the post that you started from so that when you stretch the fence and they slide along the top rail, they don't ca catch on the eye top. So, not on this side. We're going that way. We'll be on this side. This is a homemade version of what we call curtain hangers. You guys can make this at home. Top rail, truss rod. Okay? Or you can buy some really cool ones from MrFenceTools.com if you want, just to be cool. But how these work, this hangs underneath that first knuckle. By using these top rail version ones, or the ones that Mr. Fence Tools has to go on the end of a piece of pipe. You can take a piece of top rail, stick the swedge in in here, and push this up on eight, 10, 12 foot tall fence without using ladders to get up there and hook these on the top rail. What is this called? This is a tension bar. This is what allows us to get the tension on the fabric. This is fabric. This bar connects the fabric to the tension bands. The uh, bolts connecting the two together around the post. That's what it is. Tension bar. It's not a thingy majiggy. Cut the corners off the bottom of your tension bar. A pair of bolt cutters before you send it. That's going to make it go on down through those diamonds so much easier. What we need to do, guys, is figure out the pattern to cut the wire. And you can slide the bar down to figure that out. You can hold it on the outside, parallel with the post, and look at the diamonds and figure out what the pattern is. So if we look at this, this is called a link. One wire is called a link. The diamond is what's created by two links. Now I'm going down one and over. I can catch this, this link, I'm skipped over a link. We started here, get inside that knuckle, I'm sco scooting over one link every time. Down, catching that link. Now it's not perfectly parallel with the post, but we can pull that little bit of difference out with a pull jack. So I got the one link I'm going down, I'm skipping one over. Down, I'm skipping one. So I'm going the same link, one diamond down and then over one link. So one diamond down and over a link. One diamond down, over a link. See, down one and over. I want it over. Notice that this is a six foot tension bar and what's the problem? Right here. So that's why you gotta use a taller tension bar when you're on an extreme slope, a bias cut. You need to step up one more length in tension bar so that you can reach that top diamond. 